Welcome to Genesis Unleashed, where we unleash the truth of Genesis. And ask the question, how did blind chemistry create mind, meaning, and morality? Welcome to Genesis Unleashed, and again on this program we're going to do the next question in the Question Evolution series, and we are on question 11, moving right along. Here's the question. How did blind chemistry create mind, intelligence, meaning, altruism, and morality? Here's the detail on the question. If everything evolved and we invented God, as per evolutionary teaching, what purpose or meaning is there to human life? Should students be learning nihilism, that life is meaningless, in science classes? Uh, that's, I mean, we, we obviously have a morality that we, that we adhere to. Right. Um, for, for right or for wrong. And um, where, where did that come from? That's the question, uh, that, that, uh, that's the, the idea that question 11 focuses on. There's a quote, there, there's a, a fascinating article actually uh, on G.K. Chesterton. You can go to creation.com slash Chesterton uh, for a great article. He was a, a great Christian apologist and it kind of deals with this issue of where morality came from. And he said that Darwinism is, quote, an attack upon thought itself. <laughs> kind of an inter interesting uh, uh, attack that he takes there. Now, we, we did have some answers to, uh, to the question, of course. And right. uh, again, we're not censoring any of the answers. If you've got another answer you'd like to send in, you're more than uh, welcome to do that. But we're just dealing with the answers that we have received so far. And so answer number one was this. Morality and the meaning of life is a philosophical question, and it's irrelevant to the theory of evolution. So this person trying to separate it, uh, you know, what we believe about where we came from has nothing to do with morality, nothing ethics, to do with et cetera. Evolution. Well, it's, we could have said this for many of the previous shows that we've done already going through this question evolution uh, flyer with these 15 questions. It's embarrassing when creationists need to explain evolution to evolutionists. <laughs> Uh, well, of course true. it has to do with morality. Right. There, there are even branches of evo evolutionary science uh, with titles right. like sociobiology, human behavioral ecology, evolutionary psychology. These are attempts to explain human society, love, morals, religion, altruism, uh, purely in evolutionary terms. In a materialistic world, you still have to deal with these things. Um, they still exist. If you're an atheist, if you're an evolutionist, everything just came from matter. These things came from matter. How do you explain that in an right. evolutionary yeah. worldview? Even, even, I mean, biological evolution, right? Biological evolution, if we just stick with the biology, it says we started, life started as a single cell right. and then progressed up to humans, right. ultimately. And somewhere in that process, how does evolution explain the origin of the morality that we find ourselves adhering to or not adhering to today? And in right. case morality exists, yes. how did it get here? That's the question. Yep. Now, of course, what we believe about where we came from, of course that's going to affect um, of course <laughs> these, it these things. Because you know, it, it answers the big questions. You know, where do we come from? What's the meaning of life? What happens when you die? Um, it affects the value of how we, we, we think life is. Is just just a random chance, um, we're just animals, we're just like, there's no, there's no real differentiation between us and, a, and, a, and a, you know, a blade of grass that's growing in a field, it, we're just, right, just right. organisms that happen to arrive here at this time, et cetera, et cetera. That's right, if, if there's a God, if there's something or someone in this case above humans to set what's right and what's wrong, then we don't have the authority to to, to determine right and wrong for ourselves. Right. It's, it's, it's something or someone, as I said, above humans. And just, just in case, you know, perhaps people watching that uh, aren't, aren't Christians, you're not believers, maybe you think we're kind of setting you up here. <laughs> um, we have quotes from evolutionists. I mean, you can read the, the works of, of so-called great atheists like Nietzsche, and you'll see that they quickly come to a point, if you follow the logic through, that life is meaningless. You just right. This is yeah. a great if, void we're if, living in. If there's no God, 
and there's no one to set the rules, then, then who sets the rules? Well, I mean, every person does. I do, you do, every one of you do. Yeah. And what makes you more right than me? Because well, that's the problem. Because right? that's, that's where we get to. Yeah, because in order for something to be more right, there has to be a standard of absolute truth to, to base our rightness off of. But with no absolute lawgiver, you have no absolute law, which means there's no absolute morality, right. which means there's no way of gauging what is more right than wrong. I mean, if I said to you, uh, you know, what's the more correct answer? Uh, two plus two equals five, or two plus two equals five million? What's more correct? Most people would say five, right? Yeah. It's closer yeah. to the real answer, but there has to be neither a real one's correct. <laughs> well, neither one's <laughs> correct, but I, I said which one is more correct, right? So five oh, is closer to four okay. because four okay. is the real truth. Um, uh, five million is, is further away, but you had to, there had to be a truth. There had to be a real bar for, for you to make that. Right, uh, right. Know, and if there's no God to set where that bar is, and everyone is allowed to determine truth for themselves, right then what's good for you or good for someone else might not be good for me. What's, what I consider bad might not be bad for someone else. Right. So if you work that through to its logical conclusion, what does it mean? There is no good and bad. That's right. Ultimately. And of course, anyone that's trying to appeal to uh, you know, society, society makes rules. Well, then you've got to admit that Hitler was right because his, his society was correct at that time in that place, et cetera, et cetera, and it all breaks down. Now, here's a quote from uh, William Provine. He's an atheist and a... Uh, uh, a professor at Cornell University, and let's, let's put it in context from an atheist point of view here. He says, let me summarize my views on what modern evolutionary biology tell us loud and clear. There are no gods, no purposes, no goal-directed forces of any kind. There's no life after death. When I die, I'm absolutely certain that I'm going to be dead. That's the end for me. There is no ultimate foundation for ethics, no ultimate meaning to life. Here he summarized the morality or amorality that could come from a version of morality that could come from evolution right and we can't really fault him for that I mean that's he's just being consistent he's being logical actually yes. in his worldview yeah. yeah because you know to answer those three big questions where do we come from well he says evolution what's the meaning of life there is no meaning there is no meaning of life yeah what happens when you die nothing so when even when you think of it this way I mean according to Provine's worldview if, if I go out and do something horrendous, you know, something, whatever, most people mor morally would say, well, that was atrocious, you know, you slaughtered people, whatever. If I die, if I get away with it and I die, guess what, I actually get away with it because there's no ultimate judgment. I mean, in this worldview, it's a very unfair universe. <laughs> yeah, because if you, yeah. you do something atrocious morally or ethically, and get away with it, well, you get away with it. There's no, no judgment, et cetera, et cetera. It's right, and yet we all have that, that innate... That wanting. Th of, that of, there's good, there's evil, and so on. Somebody does something wrong, you want justice, and right? And the question before us is, how does evolution explain where that came from? Exactly. We can explain where it came from, obviously, and we'll get there in a few yes. minutes. So we did have another answer. Answer number two, everyone creates his or her own meaning to, for life. It's not a question science can answer. Well, that's, that, that's going along the lines of what, what Provine just summarized for us, that yes, if evolution is true, then everyone has a right to their own standard of right and wrong. That's the, absolutely. But it, it, it still doesn't answer the question. Right. It, it's basically another non-answer to how we arrived at the morality that exists today. Right? I mean, there are laws in place today that profane embezzling and plagiarism and theft and murder and rape and everything, you know. And, and even one of the most famous atheists, Richard Dawkins, well, he calls himself an agnostic now, by the way, officially. He said it was other people that called him an atheist. He's not an atheist, he's an agnostic. Yes, well, I mean, he was always leaning in that direction. Anyways, yeah, he's 6.9 right? so. out of 7% sure that uh, there's no God. Anyway, um, he, he agrees. These ideas of morality do not come from, from evolution. Um, and, and basically, if evolution were true, there would be no basis for right and wrong when you really think about it um, you know but but he wants right and wrong he, he, he says he wants morality he believes in in a society with morality but yeah he's uh, even he's even made statements about about the Christian worldview versus things like Islam he said well I would rather live in a nation that has a Christian foundation because of the morality that comes from Christianity you right. recognize that as an atheist yeah now he's in a debate with uh, Jerron Lanier uh, and, and this evolutionist uh, asks him about morality. He says there's a large group of people who are who simply are uncomfortable with accepting evolution because it leads to what they perceive as a moral vacuum in which their best impulses 
have no basis in nature. Now notice that, uh, that Jaron is actually saying that we, we have these impulses, which is the whole purpose of the question here. Where did they come from? Why are they there in an evolutionary world? Right. Um, and Dawkins said, well, all I can say is that's just tough. We have to face up to the truth. So Dawkins is admitting, well, you know, they're there. We don't know why they're there. There is no basis for morality, but that's just tough. So I guess if people get consistent with the concept that they are there for, you know, that they're not really real in a sense, these morals, these, these concepts that we have, it, 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 they're just, they're just um, fabricated rules. It would be like me and you playing a game right. of Monopoly. Yeah. I mean... And we agree beforehand on the rules of the game. Right. But they can be changed at any point. They can be just, bent it, and it, modified. As a matter of fact, if you're winning, you know, I, I remember being a kid and I had five older brothers and you didn't, you didn't like losing, right? So when it got to a certain point and you realized you just weren't going to win, you grabbed the board and went, yeah, because <laughs> you didn't care anymore. And it didn't matter because they weren't real rules anyway, I guess. But uh, anyway. And, and some evolutionists, I mean, it, it, <clears throat> we're seeing a change now as as the morality as people are becoming more consistent with the morality that comes from evolution or can be based on evolution. Well, the fact that there is no morality—that's the whole point. Or there's well, you can you can, but you can can't you develop a morality that says there's no right and wrong. I can do what I want. You can also develop a morality that says the strongest survive and therefore I'm going to wipe everybody else it's out. The that's the morality law. that could come from evolution. Right. Or there are moralities that can come from evolution. Yep. But the question is, how do you get right and wrong? And, and the world that we find ourselves in, where right. people say this is, it's, it's wrong to kill, it's wrong to lie, it's wrong to cheat, and so on. Um, but lying, let's take lying for example. Evolutionists have said that uh, it's okay to lie. Under, uh, if, you're, if you're teaching evolution, in order to get to an end, the, the, the end justifies the means type right. of thing, you could it's okay to lie. Teach falsehoods in order to convince someone of evolution because that's more right than them becoming a creationist. For right, example. yeah. If you go to creation.com slash deceive, uh, there's more information there on evolutionists saying, yeah, we, should, we, we, we can lie. It's not a problem there to get you people can to believe lie in evolution. To students, yeah. But why stop at lying? I mean, if, if the whole morality is, uh, is, is supposed to be turfed on the basis of evolution, then uh, if we just evolve from pond scum and we're just evolved animals anyway, like all the other animals, then uh, what's wrong with murder? Why? I mean, lying people might uh, say, well, yeah, you can lie under the right circumstances. Well, let's murder. Let's, let's take it to an extreme. Mm -hmm. There was a recent article in the Journal of Medical Ethics. Interesting titles yeah. uh, for this journal, seeing as, as how they, they published a paper called After Birth Abortion, Why Should the Baby Live? Mm -hmm. And the abstract reads this way. This is the abstract of the article. Abortion is largely accepted even for reasons that do not have anything to do with the fetus's health. By showing that, one, both fetuses and newborns do not have the same moral status as actual persons, two, the fact that both are potential persons is morally irrelevant, and three, adoption is not always in the best interest of actual people. The authors argue that what we call afterbirth abortion, killing a newborn, should be permissible in all cases where abortion is, including cases where the newborn is not disabled. Right. Now, that is absolutely shocking to most people, whether you're a, you know, yeah, I mean, a, it's a, a theist, an atheist, the, whatever you want to To the barbaric it. societies of hundreds of years ago where people sacrificed their children to, to some weird god or some superstitious <laughs> notion. Yeah, and, and I mean, we can follow this through, you know, okay, so we're evolved animals. Um, the baby, you know, growing in the, in the womb is not a real person. We can get rid of them. Then we're going to bring it up to the second trimester. Well, you know, whatever. If it's got a birth defect. Uh, of course, in Canada, we have no um, law against, uh, you know, late-term abortions here in Canada. Most, most Canadians think that it's within the first three months. That's not true. Um, you know, ninth month, you've just had your 3D ultrasound. You can kill the baby, right, in the womb. And this is just really the next step. This is it's just a the logical next step. progression it on is. the basis of evolution. As a matter of fact, it's the same argument that we would use. We would say, listen, it's no different before the baby's one second before the baby's born to one second after the baby's yeah. born. It's still a person. They're yeah. arguing along the same lines. They're saying you're absolutely right. So why not kill the baby after the baby yeah. comes out? 
And what was shocking in the, in the article, of course, and because there is no line. Once you, you take away an absolute morality, there's no line. Yeah, once they're born, I mean, why not kill a two-year-old yeah, or a ten-year-old? Exactly. Or, there was no yeah. mention of when you do become a person. So is that two years? Is it 12 years? Is it 16? I mean, right. whatever. For more details on that, go to creation.com slash abortion after birth. Creation.com slash abortion after birth. Uh, there's also a fascinating uh, video that we've embedded into that article. A video, it's, it's hosted on YouTube, of course, about a, about a, a, a 4D ultrasound, actual movement, uh, not just 3D pictures, but move, like video, essentially. Yeah. Essentially. New technology, 4D ultrasounds, and uh, all kinds of uh, amazing details there about how a young one grows inside mom. Exactly. And, I mean, contrast that, this whole discussion about about, well, you, you kill them before they're born, kill them after they're born, and, and the, contrast that with Proverbs six seventeen, where it says, one of the things that God hates is hands that shed innocent blood. Mm. There is no blood that is more innocent than that of a newborn baby. Exactly. Or an, or an unborn baby. Uh, now, incredible. Just so people don't think that we're, what we're saying is, oh, if you believe in evolution, if you're an atheist, you're going to be a cold-blooded murderer or killer right. or anything yeah, like that. Right, yeah, need to deal with that. I've got friends that are, aren't believers, that are, that are atheists, et cetera, and, and I don't think that they're... they're <laughs> nice people, They're right? nice moral people, people, moral sure. people, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the fact is that the foundation for ethics does not come from an evolutionary worldview. Because as soon as you get to the point where you think there's no creator, there's no absolute morality, et cetera, et cetera, so what we're just pointing out is it doesn't mean necessarily that you're not going to be a moral person or have any kind of ethical standard. What we're saying is you're going to have to borrow that ethical or moral standard from some other uh, belief system, or you're just going to make it up arbitrarily, which means then even though you've got people that are moral and ethical that are atheists or evolutionists, atheistic evolutionists, that yeah. didn't come from their worldview. They're, they're yeah. just, it's either arbitrary or you're borrowing it from somewhere else. And you cannot, you don't have a hardline stance just to say why your worldview is better than anyone else's or, or right. is more correct. And then you're, you're on the path that Provine summarized for us a few minutes ago. Right. Now, there's a, a great article on the website uh, just uh, talking about the foundation for ethics. So just go to creation.com slash ethics. And you're actually going to see an article where an evolutionist wrote in uh, to our website. And he was trying to explain, well, you know, he's a moral person. Uh, you don't need God to have morality, et cetera, et cetera. And it's uh, just, a, just a great article to read through to show why. Uh, again, you can choose some arbitrary standard of, of uh, what, what's considered high morals or high ethics, but uh, really in a, in a materialistic worldview, you don't even have a, a basis to determine what's more right than more wrong. That's right. However, with the, with the erosion of, of Christian values, or let's say biblical values, in a lot of Western nations, uh, the UK, Canada, the US, uh, Australia, uh, places like that, um, you see that standard being replaced with something closer to, uh, what again, what Dr. Provine summarized, the morality that comes from evolution. And uh, the, the problem is you can't build a society on that. What we'd call a civilized society. A civilized society, yeah. Uh, you, you get a civilized society if, if you have do not lie, do not cheat, do not murder, do, do, do not covet your neighbor's property, uh, yeah. You can build a society on that. Or take economy, for example. You can't build an economy if you don't have morality, that morality in place, the Christian morality, essentially. Yep. If you don't have do not lie, do not steal, do not cheat, and have laws imposed by the government on everyone in the, in the country, mm -hmm. how can you have an economy if there's no law against embezzling? Well, just go, just go and rob a bank. Take money from your company. Steal time. Steal whatever. Yep. Um, you, you, I, I wonder... You know, with the with the degradation of those Christian uh, th those Christian standards in a lot of Western nations, um, what the future is going to hold? You know, we have the the Bernie Madoffs and and the the economic downturns that we're that we're in right now. Yeah. Meanwhile, a couple of, a few years back, there was numbers coming out of some African nations, for example, of twenty eight thousand people a day making professions of faith for right. Christ. Yeah. China, uh, look at the, 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 the church in that's China. That's right, there's a huge like underground crazy. church in China, even though it's illegal, it's not legal to, to be a Christian in China, yeah. or to have a church anyway. And, and yet, I, I wonder if you know, the children of those folks that are making professions today, or have made them in the last 10, 20 years, when they get into positions of power and, and have that morality, do not lie, do not cheat, uh, love your neighbor as yourself, that mm -hmm. biblical morality, 
I wonder what's going to happen to the economies of those nations that have for quite a long time been the, the poor nations. And we know what's been happening to the economies in the Western world countries where Christianity has uh, waned and is on the decline. That's right. And, and yeah, under interesting attack. thought. Um, you can go to creation.com, of course, and uh, see all the 15 questions uh, for evolutionists that we have. Uh, you can look at the, the other videos we've made and, and stay tuned for, uh, for other ones upcoming as well.